James here today. I'm going to be talking to you about this state of the art by EM Banks. But before we get to that, I need to say that I am actually recording this just before 11 pm on the 30th of September, which means it is the official end of sci fi September. But don't be disheartened, my little star faring children weird. Uh, don't be disheartened because uh, aside from this review, State of the Art by e &M Banks, we are going to be doing a bonus review tomorrow, 1st of October, for um, Waking Your Sleeping Giants, the first book in the Themis Files series, because I thought I'd, I was done with Sci-Fi September when I finished this book uh, yesterday, but it turns out I could read a whole book in a day. I've got no life, I've got nothing to do, I've got no obligations to God or kings or men or anything like that. So we're going to be doing a bonus review, uh, which is good because I need content uh, for, for the coming week as I desperately try and catch up with some more reading. Um, but that is another point for another day. Today is all about this. Ian M. Banks, The State of the Art, Culture Number four as it turns out i was for some reason i was under the impression that this book uh, was culture number three but it turns out that's not true um and i would have known that had i, I just opened the flap uh, where all the books are listed so use of weapons is actually meant to be number three not this but don't worry because this is a short story collection it's quite short. A lot of the stories in here are actually very short. A lot of short story collections you'll see, um, you know, especially with people like Lovecraft um, and um, definitely with Andrzej Sapkowski, but like those short stories can be on the longer side, like 80 plus pages. The main story in here, the titular, the state of the art, um, is a longer story. It's more of a novella length thing. It just comes in at just over a hundred pages. Um, but the others are often very short, between ten and twenty pages. I don't think any cracked the thirty page marker. But they're all really good. Um, Ian M. Banks is an author who, for some reason, um, I always get it in my head that I'm going to really struggle with his books, um, and that may be down to like. Uh, my experience is reading his original book, Consider Flavus, but that's another story for another time. Um, the State of the Art is a collection of short fiction, most of them taking place in the culture universe, though arguably not all of them. Some of them are just sort of like weird ramblings, especially the last one, which is called Scratch, um, which I'm not sure... Uh, if it's meant to be just one story or if it's like a collection of really, really like flash fiction -y kind of things. But Ian M. Banks approaches this book with the same level of uh, political commentary and just a very genuine tongue-in-cheek writing style. Um, he is like the Scottish Andrzej Sapkowski. Uh, he very much goes for the gullet in terms of political satire. Um, he doesn't hold back, especially in Scratch, which I just mentioned, which has like a whole uh, stream of consciousness paragraph about how Thatcher's going to make Britain great and the, the Labour lot, the Labour lot's going to make us all unemployed. Um, so it's very relevant still. I mean, Ian M. Banks was writing this stuff, obviously, in like post-Thatcher Britain. I can't... When was this published? It's got to be 90s, right? 91. So this is like the very end of Thatcherite Britain. Um, and a lot of that shows in here. I think there's still like a lot of it seems to be focused on kind of like Cold War sentiments. Um, you know, there's just there is some brilliant short stories in here. Um, it's hard to really review a short story collection because you'd have to go really in depth with you know, each story and just sort of analyse it and then work out how it works as part of a whole. But they don't really gel together. Like, none of them really flow on from each other, which is probably the only criticism I really have um, of this book. Um, I like a short story collection that has, like, a kind of framing device where, uh, you know, all of them are kind of 
in the same vein. They kind of match on from each other. Um, stories of Your Life and Others um, by Ted Chang is an example where all of the stories have like the same... Uh, like they've got a similar thematic bent to them, even if they're not all related and they don't flow on from each other. But uh, this book is it's a fantastic work. There's so many imaginative ideas. Ian M. Banks really sort of takes the utopian sci-fi um, and elevates it to, you know, just it's just a really fun book series to read. And it's always a pleasure uh, dipping back in. To the universe even though for some reason in my in my monkey brain i'm like oh, no i'm not ready um i guess i i guess i'm i've come around i always will be ready for an ian e m banks book we'll never get another one obviously because he's dead now um but uh let's talk about some of the the highlights obviously scratch is like it's just a brilliant way to end a book it's so out there very stream of consciousness um, you know, he plays a lot with different kind of writing styles in this um, and different ideas. The mainline culture books tend to follow, you know, the special circumstances, which is like the special ops team of the culture. Um, they're going around interfering or not interfering with certain planets and like the debates and that. And there is some of that in this. Um, but I think with a short fiction, we are moving away from more of the space opera stuff and coming back to the more... Uh, kind of quirky eccentric stories um, that you get some of them are stronger than others I think um, the second story is like no not the second day third one I don't know one of them I can't remember what one it is um, so one of the stories kind of doesn't do much for me it's kind of a bog standard like it's like a little I don't know, it's like a really miniature spy story, but it's just too condensed. I think there's some good character work in there, but it's still very condensed and doesn't really bear much weight. Uh, a lot of his other stuff is more imaginative. I think that was the most sort of bog standard, like sci-fi, whatever, heist. It's not even a heist. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like an assassination plot kind of thing. Um, but the main story, the state of the art, um, was very interesting. It's about a group of culture um, people that... So the culture, for those of you who don't know, are like a utopian collective um, that exists, obviously, in space. Um, they are kind of post-human. Uh, they're gene-modified, so they can, like, give themselves different drugs through secretion in their glands and, like... They've extended their lifespans and they can change gender basically at will, all that kind of stuff. Um, but they don't have like a unified ideology. Uh, they don't have like a organized religion. There's no like membership. It's like you can come and go basically from the culture. It's all optional. Um, and you basically get to live out all of your wildest dreams because they're a post scarcity kind of people like they're catchphrase in um, the state of the art is uh, money is an indicator of poverty um, which is like the philosophy there they're kind of like a uber utopia communist state but they go and discover earth basically in the 1970s and there's like a big discussion between the crew of whether they should interfere whether they shouldn't and then like the different culture agents sort of just living life on earth to see what we're all about basically in that time um so it's a really interesting story it's got some interesting political discussions it's got some ideas about you know whether we should interfere and it really goes scathing hard on uh, how humanity is fucking the planet up like the big debate is you know we should interfere like heavy-handedly because these people are doomed and like the the hyper logical um ship ai is just like well I mean, maybe we should just, you know, let them let them go and we'll, we'll watch them for a few thousand years and see what happens. <laughs> and it's it's very interesting. It's very tongue in cheek, as I say. He's got a very dry sense of humour, uh, very British, even though, you know, he's Scottish, but it's the very British sense of humour, you know. Um, so, yeah, really enjoyed this one. It was a good way to almost close out Sci-Fi September. Um as I say, I did manage to read uh, all of 
Sleeping Giants just today. Um, and I really enjoyed that as well. So look forward to that review tomorrow, or I guess later today, depending on when you're watching this. I am going to get this uploaded before midnight, I promise. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. We're now moving away from sci-fi um, because it's going to be uh, October, which is not sci-fi September. Uh, I read five sci-fi books this month. And I'm happy with that. That's a good number for me. Like five books is almost as like as big as I can imagine doing. Uh, two of those books were really long as well. Like they were plus five five hundred plus pages. Um, really, I probably would have been able to read at least one more had Annihilation not been so fucking painful to get through. Um, that really slowed me down. Um, but overall, a very successful month for me with sci-fi um thanks for watching all the reviews and everything as you do uh follow me on social media i don't know i don't know how social media works i've got like six twitter followers and i don't tweet but i have got a twitter now i don't really understand it but you know that's the life that's the life you gotta become that social media guru join me in october when i'll be reading all sorts of stuff. I'm not really like into just reading spooky stuff in October. I mean, I'm I'm gonna do some of it. I probably should read Dracula at last. Um, but yeah, I might could could read anything. Could read anything. Let's see what I've got down here. Oh look, I just bought this. I just bought this book in the Waterstones. Look at this monster. This is called The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. I bought it because I was impressed by its big size. Literally, I have no idea what it's about. I believe it's about... Actually, I do know what it's about. That's a lie, because the premise is great. Um, it's about a bunch of guys who are going to pull off a heist on a super highly guarded fortress to steal a magic sword. Um, it sounds kind of generic fantasy-ish, but I love a good heist, and... It might do well. So that was a long ramble. See you next time with videos. Bye.